helical gears come with a hand. As shown here, the one the gear on the left is the left-handed helical gear. In the center is a spur gear or straight gear. And on the right is a right-handed helical gear. You need a right and a left to mesh properly on in a parallel axis situation. There are gears that run on cross axes shafts. But today we're going to talk about the parallel running helical gears shown here. Now, helical gears uh, are better in some ways than a spur gear. They, they have more teeth and mesh and therefore they're stronger than an equivalent spur gear and quieter. But they have a disadvantage in that they, ha they create a side load and this usually requires a thrust bearing or some accommodation for this side load. To overcome the side load problem, you can make a pair of right and left hand helical gears together and they form what's called a herringbone gear. Although harder to manufacture, they solve the side load problem. To go back in time a little further, surely the, the Chinese claim the legend of cog and notch type gears, but here we're looking at the Antikythera mechanism, which came later but still quite a quite an interesting relic in in the BC period 70 BC 70 or 80 BC and then things really quickly rushed forward when we had uh, the industrial revolution through up to a really key point where Whitworth uh, was the dominant figure on the stage and here's his his machine that made gears and clearly in the middle of this is a hob so this was a hobby machine, maybe only set to make one type of gear. Not long after that came a gentleman by the name of Sheely, who made this patent. I twisted it so you could see the similarity at Whitworth's. And his hobby machine was really the first intent-built hobby machine. A relic of this machine does not exist, and some surmise that it wasn't buildable at the time. Now, of importance to our story is Herman Fowder, who entered the stage with his, with his U.S. patent in 1900. And he made, uh, out of his garage, in good entrepreneurial style, his first prototype hobby machine. Now, it became quite popular and it was uh, an obvious hit. And so he grew into a rather large shop in Chemnitz, Germany. And the key attribute of his hobby machine was its universality. The machine would make worm gears, sprockets, spline shafts, spur gears, and notably helical gears. And these helical gears could be of any angle, any pitch, and any tooth, and were all possible to cut with the same hobby it. And this is the logo that has been with Fowder since inception. Original Fowder, made in Germany. So let's look at one in the field. Let's do a walk around. Here is the index gearbox. Use it to set the tooth count for the gear you're going to make. Runs full of spur gears. The next box, ha box has two clusters on the left differential and on the right feed gears. A little black knob there is to engage the differential. There's the uh, stem that goes up to run the feed mechanism and move the hob head up and down to climb or conventional hob. I took the window off so we could see a little oil running around in the machine. Pretty interesting oiling system. There's the hob cutting a helical gear as we speak. Underneath the platter is a big worm gear. And then here's the dial indicator for measuring the depth of tooth cut, uh, working depth for your tooth. Okay, that was kind of fast. Let's do it again. There's the machine with the logo right above the main shiv. The next cabinet is the index cabinet, and it shows the feed gears, E and F, and then A, B, C, and D, the conventional change gear setup. Interesting lube system going on in there. Now, kind of above that cabinet and uh, 
by the operator panel is a black knob that engages and disengages the, the, the differential. And there's the differential cabinet. It shows the differential cluster on the left and the feed cluster on the right with the operator panel above. I'm, re I'm reaching in here to depress the hobbing button. If you'll notice, there's four gears on the differential drive train. This will make a left-handed gear. And at this point, uh, my wife's reaching in from the from uh, to hit the hob button. And if you'll notice, there's five gears in the differential train, and that'll make a right-handed gear. So I'm not going to go into the change gear calculations for the differential, which are follow right along for the way you would do it for index gears, maybe a little more tedious. But the first thing we run into is how to set the machine up on that hob head, and it's not not very difficult really once you figure it out but the owner's manual is in German so get your dictionary out roll your sleeves up and and get ready for a little bit of a drill to decode the owner's manual now I have an English owner's manual but it's not as complete and also I tried very hard to yep. use Google Translate on these pages but technical German hobbing language just doesn't translate so it's also a very nice Gleason dictionary that you can find on their site Gleason Corporation uh, I happen to have a hard copy of it so between all of those you decode each piece at a time and I just used tape and taped it all up and made me a nice uh, English version you can also write on this and help keep track of what you what you want to do with your machine for a job and if you do it just right in the very end and you keep track of these things per job, you'll end up with a sheet like this showing all your index change gears and characteristics of your hob, as well as how the machine needs to be set up to calculate, or excuse me, cut a left and a right hand helix gear. Now, when you're going through this, you'll notice one place in the differential change gear set, there's a little red rectangle added into the change gears for the differential set it only needs four but there's an extra red box there indicating you need to add a reversing gear to that cluster and what the reversing gear gear does is just what you you would expect it reverses the direction of uh, transmitted power in that gear cluster so this gives the action and rotation you want and swiveling the hob head the right direction also allows you to cut the helix you want also, if you notice uh, on the far right, it shows for a left-hand helix gear, the hob head will swivel down to the right. And there's no change to the uh, differential change gears below it. But when you go to the right-hand helix, the left-handed choice down this flow chart, you'll see that there's an extra, that's where that extra rectangle is to add to the differential change gear box. And also, we're going to climb hob this uh, gear, and there's no change to the feed gears. So here is the final product showing the two gears and those two pages as we cut it. So if you recall from the beginning, there is a logo that Fowder has, and that cross relates to the vertical on the machine and the angle that you got to swing the hob head on net of the lead angle so the logo is the hob head angle very creative and it's a very nice logo it stands out nicely and uh, it's on all the old fatter machines I've ever seen now Herman was justifiably proud of his revolutionary invention and he made this bold statement in his patent application he claimed that the method he invented quote, could not be, could be considered as not being able to be improved further. It's a pretty bold statement. He's very proud of what he was doing. And after he visited America in 1909 and again in 1913, he, he proclaimed that we must ultimately build our machines in America. And he was chasing that down. And uh, here's a promotional training video, kind of at his height there. And uh, uh, explains his logo. Let's check it out. Sie alle sind Zeugen der genialen Idee ihres Erfinders Hermann Pauter. The 
differential is what it's all about. That's what makes a helical gear. And here in the gearbox, I'm just depressing the hot button and it engages the differential gears on your left. There's four of them in there. And in a schematic, what they look like is in the whole gear train, fatter drive train. In the lower left, there's four there, and there the upper one, D, is on a shaft that goes over to the differential. And that differential is what, uh, that mechanism is what, is what advances or retards the timing of the index gears and that index train just enough to make the angle of the helix you're interested in. So that's the magic that Fowder brought to the tables. He figured out how to do this with the set of gears to make any helix angle you wanted. So when you touch off with your hob, you get this vertical or near vertical stripe. It's actually at the angle of the helix in it. And that is an indication that your machine is set up right when those count out to be the right tooth count and everything is fitting and working in your machine. So here we go. We've depressed the button for the uh, right-handed helical gear and here it is in slow-mo just cutting away you'll see the hob heads climbing up climb hobbing uh, the helix is working the gears are slanted and the hob head is slanted to your right so when you get done you'll see these little tooth marks they're called scallops now as we take this off here you'll see them we'll see them on the bench here too in a sec so when you take this off, uh, the gear off, you'll see these, you know, toolpath marks. And it's the generating toolpath mark of the hob passing through, through each of these gear teeth spaces. And they make this, uh, this pattern. Now, it looks like it might be rough, but that's only, by, my, by calculation at least, is, you know, a few microns. Of, of roughness in there so it's a very smooth surface so when you take a look at those uh, you'll see that in in most hob gears before they start running on each other after after you grind them or do other processes to them those go away but uh, a lot of uh, a lot of machinery can run with the with a hob gear to start with there we are again with the left and the right and this is just showing that uh, the swiveling of that hop head. There's uh, vernier scales on all, all the four major axes of this hop head, so you can move it uh, in all four quadrants. And this is just showing uh, moving the hop head up and down and how the differential keeps track of uh, where the hob is in relation to the workpiece. Needless to say, the, the machine is quite capable. It is worth reiterating that the hobbing generating principle used in this machine you can make uh, multiple pitches if you change the hob but with a single hob you can make uh, gears of multiple angles of helix and multiple tooth counts all with that same cutter in the machine so it's quite capable and quite versatile in that way and those characteristics uh, make it uh, quite useful the gear train and all of uh, this methodology is very applicable to other hobbing machines. Machine constants may vary, but the principles of hobbing in the Fowder drivetrain are right at the heart of uh, most, if not all, of these old machines. Here's a time lapse of our helical in 2021, and here's the one from probably 100 years ago.